Good morning. It's Wednesday. We're back uh, to do the lessons uh, as we continue to move through the Pentecost season. Um, I think we're beyond halfway through. <laughs> uh, I think there's only about 28 weeks, but because uh, we end up uh, the the Sunday after Thanksgiving is typically the last Sunday of Pentecost. Uh, and then we move into the Advent season from there. Uh, so we, we've got a little bit of time left, but uh, uh, it's, it's been very interesting. Got some interesting passages today. The first one that we kick off with, the psalm, is my own personal confirmation verse, Psalm 27, verse 1. Uh, I was tempted to preach on that one, but I was uh, led to uh, picking the epistle passage uh, in Philippians uh, for this this coming Sunday. Um, so uh, the other intriguing thing is we've got Isaiah 55 again for the third time. For the, yeah, We had it once in July. We had 10 to 13, I think. Then we had it in August where we had 1 through 5, and now we get the verses in between. <laughs> um, so again, yeah, we get some interesting things going on here. And then we get a, another familiar uh, kingdom parable uh, in, in Matthew 20. Uh, and you've got to be careful there that you don't look at it as being works righteousness. Um, because if, if, you focus, if you focus on the believer in that passage, your, your focus is in the wrong place. Um, it's not about works righteousness. Um, and, and then finally, uh, the, then the connection, works do play a part in that. I was going to say, works have works a big Works do part in play it. a part in it. Um, but it's not how we get there. Exactly, exactly. And, and so that, that's, the, um, that's the connecting theme is how do works play into uh, what we do uh, and, and how do those works actually get done. Uh, and we've said it before, uh, but, but again, it'll be an emphasis here. So, Well, if the tree don't bear fruit, dig it up. <laughs> or, or, or fertilize it and give it another chop it, chance. Chop it down. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can chop it down too. So, um, yeah. well, let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to be in your word. Uh, let that word just resonate among us. Uh, let it just uh, dwell. Let us dwell within it. Let your spirit guide us uh, into understanding. Uh, but beyond understanding, let the spirit implant that so that it does bear fruit, uh, the fruit of service to you. Now, Heavenly Father, guide our, our talking, guide our hearing, guide our uh, reception of those things that you give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we start, start with Psalm 27, uh, 1 through 9, and there are more than 9 verses. Uh, so I do have to stop at 9. Well, you don't have to, but <laughs> it, uh, there's no sense in reading the others. There's enough there with the 9, yeah. and especially since we didn't study, I didn't study the others, so... Uh -oh. um, so uh, you want me first, or you want to go first? Uh, go ahead this morning. That's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, I figured I figured you would because you see the Isaiah passage is a shorty that you have to read oh, next. I, I didn't even <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I'll take I'll take Psalm twenty seven since it is my confirmation verse. There you go. Uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger, O you who have been my help. Cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Lord is my light and my salvation. Yeah. Take a look. The Lord is my light. Right. Okay. He reveals everything. Light reveals it all. Yep. You know? And, and, and that statement, you know, the Lord is my light and my salvation, that kind of removes the fact that in my ignorance, you know, the, the Lord has revealed who I am. You know, a, a lost, condemned soul. Right. You know? So, and even while we're still ignorant, it's not reliant upon us. It is not. That, that's why. That's why the beauty of my light and my, my salvation. salvation. You can't separate them. Right. Because that's that's what it is, and that's what that's the result. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and 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 again, uh, he has he does that repetition yeah. thing. My light and my salvation, the stronghold of my life. Right. Uh, and and then. To cap that off, ask the question, it's sort of a rhetorical question, who, who, whom should I fear? <laughs> the answer is nobody. Nobody, right? Nobody. He's the light. He's the salvation. He's the stronghold of my life. He's got it. God's got it. So I don't need to fear anything. And it's interesting. Who shall I fear? And then, and then it continues on. The Lord is the strong, stronghold of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. Two different words there, actually, phrased differently. Same phrase, word, same, same word, word, but phrased, phrased differently. Phrased differently yeah. to emphasize right the difference of you know fear and reverence for the Lord versus fear and being afraid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a definite, uh, definite, uh, and just a statement of you know, hey, you've got it, Lord. I know right. who you are. I revere you. I worship you. You know who who should I who should I follow? Who should? And then if the Lord is your light and your salvation, and He is the stronghold of your life, why be afraid? Right. You know? and, and so we get into two and three with a lot of examples of things that cause fear. Right. You know we we live in an age today where there are a lot of people who are afraid. Uh, and for one reason or another, uh, are they afraid of the people who are, who are socially unrest? Uh, are they afraid of COVID-19? Hmm. Are they afraid of their financial well-being? Uh, because that can very well all happen to, I mean, look, look at what happened when COVID-19 ha well, took place. Look! Look at what the stock markets did. That's, and, that and, can happen again. And there is a fear that that's going to happen again. Yeah, and 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 being older adults, you know, there's always that fear of well, what's what's the next health th crisis yeah. that's going to come up, and and will I be able to afford it? Right. You know, there, there's a lot, and and so he he caught the evil doers that assail me. I mean, as, to me, assailing. A sailing to me, my vision of that is what the people in Alabama and Florida are going through with the winds and the rains just, just battering them right now. Them down, yeah. That's a sailing. It, yeah. it, it, it just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming. And, and that, that then becomes a, a problem uh, for, the, for people as they deal with this. But uh, it says that... Uh, it's those things that are going to stumble and fall. Right. And one of the things you know, I said when evildoers assail me, you know, we've got to remember our own sin. 
Sometimes we just give it up. Mm. Okay? Sometimes we just allow these things to, to assail us, you know, in our ignorance. You know, one of the commentators said, you know, when evildoers assail me and eat up my flesh, we do that not only... Not only others do that to us, Satan does that to us, we do it to ourselves. Right. You know, we just let things overcome us, you know. And I don't want to be there when I stumble and fall. I mean, I, I don't want that to happen. And I know the Lord's going to hold me through that. And, and that's the point of, you know, though an ant army encamped against me, you know, we need to realize my heart shall not fear. You know, I'm going to be confident because... My confidence is in the Lord, not right. in my strength. Right. It's in the Lord, and he's going to get me through it. Well, and I, and I like the interesting thing. There, To me, there's a progression there. It's they who will stumble, stumble, my heart shall not fear, and then I will be confident. Yes. So it's not to, just that I'm not going to fear. I'm going to have confidence. I'm going to have confidence. I'm going to get through this. Yeah, I'm going to fall short. Things are going to go wrong. I'm going to have doubts. Yeah. But then on the other hand is like, okay, wait a minute. Who's got this? <laughs> and, and that's where the confidence lays you know, or lies. I can never remember which way to, to use that one correctly. Well, you were math, not English, right? <laughs> well, I was English too, but oh, but, oh. but there are certain words that just get me. Well, and, and, and that's then where four go. You know, you, you get this. The questions of fearing and being afraid, you get the things that, that cause us to fear and be afraid. But ultimately, the answer comes in four. One thing, one thing have I asked. And one That's thing. what I'm going to seek after. Right. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to I be where God dwells. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and interesting, you know, upon the beauty of the Lord... And inquire in his temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, I said inquire just doesn't seem to fit there in my mind, so I had to do some little research on that, and and that goes back to is care for his temple. I'm thinking, okay, now that fits the gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and I'm doing something in his temple. I'm not just there to be a partaker. I have a a task at hand. Okay. Well, and sometimes that task. And, and when we come to worship, we we are working. We are. We are work. We are working. Even in our worship, we we might be passive in a lot of it. But but if we if we think about it, are we really? Because our mind should be at work. Exactly. Our, our heart should be at work. And that's caring for his temple. And that's not the building. You know. We are his temple. Fellow believers, we work, we care for his people. That's our task. You know, uh, he will conceal me and cover me and, and, and lift me up upon a rock. I mean, you know, well, and, that's and, today and that's and, in the future. And for the Jewish person hearing uh, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent is... He's going to tabernacle with me. Yes. And, and and when you go to Revelation, you get the same imagery that we are tabernacling with him. Right. We're there. Um, We're it, there. It, 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 it's, it's that sense of what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, when, when when the glory of the Lord shone through him. Yeah. Uh, we, the, we, we, want, we want to tabernacle we want to, with him. We want to build a little shelter. We want to tabernacle. Well, we want to... We gotta let him build the tabernacle. Exactly. We it's, gotta let him build the tab tabernacle, and so yeah, th th that's where our confidence is. Our confidence is 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 in that place where we dwell with the Lord. And then six says, "Now my head shall be lifted up." Right. Uh, I don't have anything to fear. Um, and in his tent, who we'll offers shouts of joy and sacrifices. You know, again, in that right, we're you know, with him, right? In that, and, and you're right, that word tent, tabernacle, in his, he's going to build it, he's doing it, the new Jerusalem. And it's so easy to be confident in him. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's if what, you didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that. That's why I think we have verses 7, 8, 9 in this text. Because again, 7, 8, 9, they really. Tie, they tie it. 7, 8, 9 lead to the other passages. They do. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why we set off with this one was it really sets the foundation of our confidence is in the Lord. Our confidence is that he tabernacles with us. Uh, he dwells with us. Oh, and by the way, he tabernacled with us when Christ took on our bodily form. That that was the ultimate tabernacling of God with his people. Right. But the reality of it is, these things still assail us. They keep coming after they, us. They they and not only do they assail us, but they encamp around us. That that means they they're setting in their place they they're not they're not just assailing and moving on they they they're assailing and they're staying put and we're going to see in Matthew how God takes care of that yeah yeah you know and and, and so so we ask hear o lord when i cry aloud be gracious to me and answer me because again you're getting assailed you're getting pounded right. you're getting pounded you have said seek my face my heart says to you your face do i seek so don't hide your face. Aren't there time? And and we I preached this about a month ago, talking about God's silence. Yes, we did. That's been about a month. Yeah, you know, and, God and, always doesn't jump right into things. Right. We and, saw that with with Jesus, how he just sat back and was quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 that's why he's. He knows that there are those moments when he is being assailed. I know you have those moments where you're being assailed. Uh, and, and and you're wondering, okay, God, where are you? Where are you? Uh, the, the promise of the psalm is you're going to tabernacle with us. You're going to dwell with us. Uh, where are you? Uh, the Lord promised when he ascended into heaven, I will be with you all, always. Uh, and, and that's where the, the, the psalmist in his human nature cries out. Right. And interesting, there was a text in Luke. And I tell you, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who re who asks receives. One who seeks find. And to the one who knocks it will be open. But we can't put that in our realm of understanding, in our content, and saying, "I'm sick. I want to be better. So God heal me." You know. Right. I mean, it's we're not talking about the physical. We're talking about spiritual. And we're not limiting it to just the spiritual, right. but it is fulfilled in the spiritual. Well, and that whole seeking his face is what tends to happen when we are getting assailed. We turn inward. We do. We start focusing in on me, myself, me, and, myself I. and I, my, my, my problems, my suffering. How am I going to get through? This? What do I have to do to get over this? Right. The The old mentality of... You know, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's that it's it's that God only helps those who help themselves. I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, very very false theology, uh, because again, the theology says instead of turning toward self, turning inward, we need to seek His face. And as he as he says, my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek? Yeah. And so so do not hide it from me. That's a perfect segue right into Isaiah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 55 again. The middle verses. Yeah, 6 through 9. 6 through 9, 6 7 8 and 9. And by the way, I, I don't know about but the last text is just as long as the uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I didn't benefit here. Yeah, well the, the the gospel is <laughs> not short either. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we are in Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 9, and you'll see the connection uh, due to the last portion of the psalm. Oh, absolutely. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, or my thoughts than your thoughts. I think we've had that higher than and 
recently as well. Well, but yeah, right. Well, we talked about how it talked about God's abundance. This this now is creating the separation between right. that He's God and we're not. And it's very important that you know we start with this uh, verse six. It says, "Seek." You know, seek and worship is different than seeking and head knowledge. We've got to stay away from, gee, I just want to put it in my realm of understanding. Right. We need to understand that God's ways are not our ways. And we got to seek and worship him and in his way of things, not ours. In the spiritual, not in the worldly. Uh, Seek the Lord so we can hand him our agenda so he can bless it. Yeah, I'm going to have this program, so I'm going to pray for the program. Well, wait a minute. Did, did, did the Lord lead you to have this program? Uh, yeah. it's, it's just... Right, right. See, seeking the Lord isn't the seeking him out so I can get what I want. Seeking the Lord is seeking him out to say, okay, Lord, what do you want of me? Right. And while he may be found... Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and that ties in while he may be found. Also ties in with call upon him while he is near. Uh, did you do any research on that while he is near? Mm -mm. Okay. It was very interesting to come out with while he is near is like being a kinfolk or a family. Okay. Okay. Like our while he is our heavenly father in that fatherly realm of that's you know his attributes so, so so sort of the sense of the nearness of relationship yes okay well, not not the nearness of physical presence not physical presence not okay. physical presence i mean christ was in the present okay and you know in mm -hmm. presence right yeah. right <laughs> he's still and, present and and that's <laughs> why i'm saying that's that's the ultimate of god tabernacling because he was physically present exactly as well as the nearness of the relationship. And now we're talking about while he is our Heavenly Father, while he is still there in that, in that attribute of acting as a Heavenly Father, you know, while he may be found. There's going to be a day of judgment. Right. Okay. And on that day of judgment, it's going to be a different attribute. And there are going to be some people that will experience the, the nearness of God and they don't they won't want the nearness of God. Exactly. Exactly. We will. You know, we we'll, will. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You know, turn around. Let's you know, that's urgency. Well, and and that's the thing I've I've read this passage over and over again because 8 and 9 are the one I use with with some people. Uh the thing that I I saw in the study of this is the wicked will forsake his way. The unrighteous man will forsake his thoughts. But then there's a plea. Return to the Lord. Repent. Right. Repent. I never saw that, you know, that, that's, I, I, was all, I would always read it in the sense of me returning to the Lord. But it's, it's saying to the wicked, and, and granted, yes, I, I am the wicked at times. I am the we unrighteous are. at times. But but I think this also helps us in understanding our role that God is going to use us to bring repentance, that that call of repentance uh, yeah. to others. That, that abundant, abundantly pardon. You know, we look at people and say, oh, God will never forgive you for what you've done. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> That, that's a little high and mighty. Yeah, right? I mean, but people think that. People say, well, I know. how can God forgive him? How, how can that man go to heaven with all the things he's done? And we want to put it in our realm again, our realm of understanding, not, but abundantly pardon, you know. Uh, he the died on the cross. The thief on the cross. Yeah. The thief on the cross is the perfect example. I mean, I mean, let him return to the Lord that he that the Lord may have compassion upon him. Yes. That's what we want. Exactly. It's all but, about but, mercy. But but how many how many people are out there today that are wanting judgment to be cast upon people rather than on them repenting and so that the Lord can have compassion upon them. Right. I mean, verse they'd rather eight, see judgment cast upon them. I mean, verse eight says it all. Right. <laughs> you know, our thoughts don't get it. 
Right. And, and the reality of it is, we shouldn't be saved. <laughs> no. it, it, and it, since his thoughts are hi higher and his ways are higher, um, the reality of it is, if it was our ways, we really, we really shouldn't be saved. I mean, aren't you glad that God isn't like me or you and, and, and act the way that we do? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't want that God. I mean... <laughs> well, and, and, and that's what I always remind people. You know, when, when the, there, there was a, a, a certain friend of ours uh, uh, in, in Woodstock that uh, when she got into those moments of, of just like, you know, the, the, the past psalm, where you know she, she was in the midst of something assailing her, she felt like the enemy was encamped around her, mm -hmm. and and you know it was the oh oh woe is me you know the the instead of seeking the Lord it's it's right. the focus is here, and, and I would I, I when she got into those moments of doing that I would always go. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, declares the Lord. My <laughs> ways are not your ways. Exactly. And, and, and it got to the point where as soon as she got to that moment I, and I was about ready to speak, she would start saying the, <laughs> the same <laughs> words. Uh, because, again, that's th that, that again, that's that thing that casts our eyes back on him. Exactly. Is to seek him. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 again, like you said before, the whole sense of seeking him is... To realize he knows what to do. Right. In one of my resources, Craft of Preaching, that I use, one of the commentaries, it had a note in there. Seek the Lord while he may be found. And then it continues on. But I am lost. I am unable, unable to find my way. How can I find Jesus? Exactly. He finds you and places himself in a place and a position so that you will see him. Right. He comes to us. Realize God tabernacles with us. We don't tabernacle <laughs> you know. with him. It, well, it's like Sunday mornings when, when I say, I'm so glad that God has drawn us here together. Exactly. It's not me coming to church. God has brought me brought here. Brought us all together. Right. Exactly. Right. Anything else there for you? No, I'm good. I'm good. We I'm... move to the gospel. Matthew 20, folks. Uh, we jump a little bit. We were, we were stuck in 14, and man, we were just plodding through those yeah, Gospels. We now we just make a huge leap. Uh, another parable. Uh, this is a kingdom parable, so again, the, the focus is on the kingdom. Um, right. And one of the things that y'all need to understand is that, you know, we've got eight-hour work days in our mind. But these right. are twelve-hour work days. Right. These twelve hours. So when you go through this, you know, definitions of the third hour, and that's like, it's a twelve-hour work day. Right. Right. Six in the morning to six in the evening. Yes. Um. So uh, Matthew twenty one through sixteen, for the kingdom of heaven is like. A master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. 
but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only an hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and again, I prefaced this earlier yeah, because, again, he, he went out to hire laborers for the vineyard. Yeah. Again, don't, don't start trying to unwrap a parable too far. Right. Uh, because then, then you start getting yourself into trouble that way. The parable, is, in, in that essence, is saying God comes to us. Correct. God comes comes to us and like what we were saying in the first parable with, with with about you know worship there's there's an act of work going on there absolutely is. so 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 and and the act of work is not just in worship it's in the whole kingdom you know and, and to me I kind of I, I I look at this and say God came to me he came to you in your baptism mm -hmm. okay when we were babes all right and we go through all our life. Now, granted, I stopped for a while, but you know, our whole life, you know, God was with us, protecting us. So, so you took you took a, a lunch break. I took a lunch break. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was a long lunch too. But you know, God works in your life. You know, wherever you're at, and brings you back, and brings you around, and turns you around. And others at the last minute, that right. last hour, right? Uh, and and, that, and this kind of goes into that, you know. He, he's going to show his love and his mercy when and where he wills. And and the thief on the cross was one in the eleventh hour. Exactly. Well, and and the interesting thing to me, you know, as as I read in a commentary on this one, the one it's it's interesting that the ones at the 11th hour were still standing around. They were still in, you know, and they didn't work an hour because they were in the marketplace. They got to walk to the vineyard. Right. So, I mean, they're, you know, but they're still standing around in the marketplace. What do they do? I mean, they're too ashamed to go home and say, I didn't get a job today. Well, and, 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 and what the commentator said was, the reason for the denarius that that was the typical wage that for a day. One day's deal. And, and when these guys went into the marketplace, it, it's sort of like uh, I know in downtown Atlanta, you can go to certain places where you could see the micro workers gather early in the morning, exactly. and and then people come by. You know, if, if a roofer or somebody comes by, I need help for the I day. need help for the day. Uh, what they are, what these guys are doing in this parable is they're just seeking to get whatever they can make for their sustenance for that day. For that day. For them and their family. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay. That that that's basically what's going on is give us this day our daily bread. And and and, and I'm and if it's, I think it's in Leviticus where it talks about don't hold a man's wages till the next day. You're supposed to pay him at the right. end of each day. And and so what they were what what the commentator was saying was these guys in the eleventh hour they were hanging around because they were desperate. Yes, they were desperate. They were longing for something that they didn't have. Yeah. D okay. Does, I does, see where you're going. Doesn't uh, again when we go back to Isaiah when we go back to Isaiah where it says you know the wicked who forsake his ways and and the unrighteous. Yeah. You know, let's turn them around. Right, they're desperate. They're longing for something that they know they need. They it, it and isn't it a daily sustenance? Our faith is not just a okay. I've got it now. No, it's a daily sustenance. It, it goes back again to that psalm right. where we're getting assailed. We need that day. We need God's 
daily tabernacling with us. <laughs> yes, we do. And, and and so really that's the sense of this then is, you know, this kingdom of heaven thing is God, and again, kingdom, kingdom parables, the focus has to be not on the worker, but on the God on, who, who the, delivers the gifts. The mercy of God. How many yes. how much, in last week's study, mercy, mercy, mercy. And we see it here again. And, and especially with the question that he asked, that he says to the workers in the first hour. He yeah. said, do you deny me yeah. my generosity? <laughs> Hello? You know? <laughs> and, and I also found out, did you did you see that there there that's really tran if you translate it literally it it says something else did you did I you did get not that catch it okay what well, well, I choose and and in verse fifteen verse fifteen am I allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me or do you begrudge my generosity that or do you begrudge my generosity it's uh. Is your eye evil toward my generosity? Oh no, I did not catch that. Yeah, at all. it's a it's a it's a Be Jewish crushed. idiom. Okay. Is the evil in your eye? Basically, in today's, are you giving me the stink eye because of my generosity? <laughs> <laughs> that that would be, that would be the modern day translation. Are you giving me the stink <laughs> eye because I'm generous? <laughs> Uh, no, but I'll take your generosity. Yeah, I, right. <laughs> well, well, I mean, but don't we begrudge things that other people receive? Yeah. Aren't we jealous at times? Well, how come they got it and I didn't? Right. Uh, it's it's so easy to be that way. Lord, Lord, I've been serving this congregation for 15 years. I haven't had an interest from one other congregation. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong with that? Uh, right. Nothing. Nothing wrong God's with that. God's got you but, where you need to be. But at, at some times, your ego, <laughs> yeah. your ego desires that. Right. And, and that's what's happening here. It's their ego. You know, we've worked, uh, we born, have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. Yeah. And it's very important here that as we talk about, you know, God's mercy and the works that are involved in this, we need to go back to Ephesians. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Mm. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that no one can boast. Right. Works does not give us an, you know, the, uh, any right at all to, to, to boast about anything. And, and when we look at this parable and what happens to the ones that were hired the first hour. Well, they're boasting. I've been here all day. Right. I, I bore the sun. I did this. I did right. that. Don't I deserve more? You know. And, and and I go back to the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah. God gives us what we he need. He provided what? Oh, and by the way, when you look at what he gives us in the simplicity of water <laughs> and in the simplicity of bread and wine. Hello. Doesn't he give us what seems very simple doesn't he give us an abundance abundance yeah exactly and and, and again i've i've seen the studies too uh, when when you start comparing when you start comparing the people who are at poverty level here in the united states and you would put them like in africa or india or some other place they're a rich person they're they're wealthy beyond their means yeah i mean right we we are mm -hmm. so spoiled we had no idea, and we as we as Christians sometimes are so spoiled because we have been firm firmly blessed by those gifts that God's given to us that we we miss the hunger. Right. We we, we miss the people who are standing in the marketplace. The freedom that we have to do this. The yeah. freedom we have to carry the carry the word, and I carry it in in my little you know handy device here. I, everywhere I go, even though I don't have the Bible as a Bible, but it is a Bible in my device, I have God's Word wherever I go. Right. People hunger for that. Right. Right. They hunger for that. Right. And and you know. and that's where we are called then to to have a heart for those people that are standing in the marketplace. Exactly. Anything else there? I'm ready. 
Philippians, sermon text. Now, this is your read, right? <laughs> All right, Philippians no, chapter 1. No, 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 Philippians 1. There's a split here. It's 12 to 14 and 19 to 30 uh, right. with this. So uh, there is a connection between those, and there's a lot here. As I'm, I'm trying to struggle with the sermon right now, when Jack came in this morning, I was working on uh, looking at my notes and trying to create a sermon out of it. I'm, I, I, I've gotten out of the introduction into the law right now and struggling with that. So, yeah. so let's, let's go ahead and uh, maybe you guys can give me some insights into uh, where we're going here. Yeah, I, I put a note up here. It says, Paul works here. Because I see this is the works of Paul, all right? And, and it's interesting as we go through this, you know, how he works, why he works, and what those works are. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest of that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through my prayers and the help of the Spirit, Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Oh, the help of the Spirit. Okay. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be ashamed, but that with full courage, now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For I am to live in the flesh. That means fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for, the purpose, for your purpose and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have the ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear that you are standing firm in one spirit and with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents that it is clear sign to them of their destruction but your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw that I had and now bear and I still have. Very, very pointed here. Yeah, and, and, and the, first, the first section of verses really set the context. It, it gives us the idea of what Paul is talking about here. Yeah, I mean, what, what has happened to him has served, has served to spread the gospel. Right. You know, he has gone through imprisonment. He's gone through beatings. He's gone, I mean, a lot of persecution. And, and what happens here? The gospel, God does his work through Paul's circumstance. Right. Well, and it goes back to the psalm. You know, being assailed, having the enemy encamped around him. He's experiencing all, that. All that. He, and and, and I, I'm going to use the the imprisonment term in the sermon, even though we're not in prison like he was. He was literally in, in prison. prison. Yes. He, he, he was bound. Uh, they don't know for sure exactly. The, the feeling might be that he, he, was being, he was bound to guards. Uh, so he was under whatever they wanted to do to him. He, right. he, 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 he had to follow. Uh, but... Paul being Paul, used that as an opportunity to, uh, what? hey, you got a captive audience. You're, and the reality was, Paul wasn't the captive one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, you know, I mean, whatever Paul shared or wrote or spoke out to the, to the people that came to visit, they heard it. You know, they saw it. Yeah. 
they were, everything that, that happened to him, they were part of that. Whether they were actually bound to him in chains or, or, or when he was under house arrest, standing guard outside. The, they were there. They got to witness all that. And how can you not be affected? Right. You know? Right. And and, and last, sun, last Sunday I started off the sermon, you know, about the distinction between belief and lifestyle. Because there is a distinction there. You know. This this week it's more what is the connection between belief and lifestyle. lifestyle. Right. Because, because again, it's... They're, it's, they're hand in hand this week. Right. Right. Because it's, it's his belief that has to have an effect on his lifestyle and that lifestyle has that impact. And, and the thing is, is, you know, as it says there in 12 for the advance of the gospel, it wasn't only the advance of the gospel for the hearers, the bound hearers, the, the soldiers, the praetorium, you know, uh, the, all, all those Roman, you know, soldiers that were hearing him. It, it, it's not only the advance of the gospel from, from their hearing and believing, but it's also the advance of the gospel from the believers seeing what he was going through. That's their martyr. And, and, you know. But also, because again, look at 14. And, and most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, they saw how he was living out his faith. It gave them confidence, confidence enough for them to speak exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. His witness, you know, uh, what he's doing, his writings. Now they can look to him and say, I can do this. I can do this. You know, and God's going to... And they're not looking at Paul for the strength. God's giving them the, their strength because of Paul's witness. Right. You know, through the Spirit, they their eyes are open to, to reality of, of the spiritual realm, and they can go forth and do. Because if, if Paul can do it, God can witness to me and share in me what I can do. Well, and the reality of it is when we compare the situations, hey, you know, at least I'm not in prison. If he can do it in prison, but, but, hello. What, what's keeping me from doing it? And and I, I think that's that. We don't always. God doesn't always put us in the same positions to do the witnessing. Right. You know, some are hands, some are feet, some are you know, eyes, some are belly buttons, some are <laughs> some are big toes. Uh, uh, but but the the thing is, the whole work of ministry is not going to be easy. It's not, and everybody has has like you say, has a part. They all have a responsibility, and God has given them gifts so that we can all work together, and that this can be one one family working together. Right, and th and that goes back to the upper room. Of being of one mind, right in Christ, you know, and and whether and you know be honored in body, whether by life or death, you know that Christ will always be honored, life or death. I mean, I, I there's a song I listen to. It's a praise song, and it talks about you know, I don't want people to remember me. I want them to remember Jesus when I die. Right. You know. And, well, and and and. Uh, I like that trans. You know, again, this is in a natural transition because we're skipping some verses. Right. But that the start of nineteen. For I know that that goes back to the confidence. That yes. for, for I know this is this is a certainty. No, no doubt about it. Th this goes back to that psalm. Yes. Um, of whom shall I be afraid? For I know uh, that's all going to turn out. And, but but. That this will turn out for my deliverance. I think that's the translation you read it in too, yes. right? Deliverance. Deliverance. It's... I I had to I had to look up at that look that word up. That word that is translated de deliverance, and it's correct. It is the word salvation. Well, there you go. Well, and, and, but see how that plays here. Yep. Because again, obviously the the. The translators are using deliverance because he knows he's going to be still preaching. He he's going to remain alive. 
But I mean, yeah, it's but, like he, he's he's saying whether I do this or whether I. It's not up to him. And and the reality of it is, <laughs> e either way, either way, he saved. Yeah. Either he saved from an imminent death right now, or it's about his salvation in Jesus Christ, which are both going on. It, whether I yeah. live or whether I die, you know, if if I, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Right. So 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 if I'm living. I'm delivered, it's salvation, but if I die, I'm it's living, <laughs> it's salvation, well, and I'm with Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, well, look at verse 23. I am hard-pressed between the two. It, it, you get the idea that it's, well, let me try to decide. The fact here, when I did the research on this, is that he's hard-pressed between the two. He wasn't living in a life of peaches and cream here. No. He is hard pressed. He doesn't know if he's going to live or die day by day. Right. He's hard pressed between the two because he's trying to get all the things done that the Lord wants him to do in this life. Right. And he knows that at any time his life's going to be taken from him. And and how often have I said that in the especially in 2020? Come Lord Jesus. Huh. Because if do we know what we're saying? Be, because because if Jesus would come right now Wow, it, it, it's for me to live as Christ to die as gain. I'm gaining, but but the reality of it is, and the, and this is where the the parable comes in in the gospel is, there are still people that are in they the eleventh hour in the marketplace. They need it. They and, yes. and, and 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 this really becomes what the sense of Paul is about here is. Yeah, he's you know uh, as you and I'm I am playing with that phrase. And I'm turning it exactly the way you're turning it. Um, I, you know, I, I'm hard pressed between the two, and it goes back to that assailing and the and the enemies encamping. How how often, when we when we are in that place where we're being assailed, where the enemy is encamped around us, that we feel hard pressed. Exactly, you know. And and, and so yeah, he. You could think of his hard pressed was I got I got two good decisions going on here, and either or, way, or or you can, or he could be thinking you know what, I, I'm in a hopeless situation right now. My situation is hopeless, but God is not, and that's right. where we get to convinced as that I know that I will remain and continue with you. You know, because God's not done with for, him yet. For what reason, though? That, that That's what's critical. Yeah. Well, Convinced of this, I know, here's that I know again. Exactly. That I will remain and continue with you all for your, for progress. your progress. Go back to the beginning for the advance of the gospel. Yeah. It's the same word. Okay. The advance of the gospel. Yeah. So, so it's not only about advancing the gospel, but it's also about advancing people. People with the gospel, it's, exactly, it's all, exactly, and so, so you know, it gets tied together. He 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 knows that there is still, and it's where I'm at. You know, when you evaluate where you are in ministry in a certain location, especially if you've been in a place for 15 years, right? Do I still have fruitful ministry here? Well, I think you did that. A, what was it a year or two years I, ago? Uh, two, yeah, I think it was two years ago. You know, uh, but but it's always a constant thing. Is is there still valuable ministry, and and that's what he's going through here. And he realized, yes, there is still valuable ministry to to be done. And and this might be selfish, but I think th as the result of this virus and everything the way it are, you and I both realize that God is using us in furthering the gospel and and, and being thankful to be. Because I've told you how much joy I get out of doing this. And it's not my joy. It's God's given me that joy to be here and be able to do this study and, and do that. I mean, I I happen to look on Sunday's service and, and I, I might have mislooked at it, but I happen to look at Sunday's service. There were already 146 views. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, the, and that's encouraging. That, that, that's that's the blessing of what we're going through, and and that and that's why we do it. You know that we do this because we because we are convinced of this. Right. That I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. 
that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ. Yes. So only let your manner of life... Now, th this is the point, and, and Paul will say that later in Philippians, uh, that I pour myself as a drink offering upon the faith of the people, mm. which is my prayer for the sermon every week. You know, th that's that sense is, uh, only let your manner of wor life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And that worthiness is be being a good citizen, but not a citizen of the world, a citizen of the kingdom. Of the kingdom, yes. Uh, and, and yes, sometimes as being a citizen of the kingdom, you're going to have things assailing you. You're going to have the enemy encamped against you. Uh, but you keep doing it for the gospel of Christ. I mean, the you know, I, I, I just take so much out of verse 27. You know, whether I come and see you or in absence, I may hear that you, hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind striving side by side for the faith and the gospel. Right. I pray that for my children, mm. that they mm. stand firm in their faith, right. that they share the gospel. And I, I, have, I, am, I am truly blessed that all my children are walking with the Lord and raising their children to do the same. And, and, and the sense, you know? and, and really the sense of uh, that striving can also be uh, translated contending. That yeah. the, the real, really the sense of it is we don't go out as lone Christians, lone ranger Christians. We ought not go out as lone Christians. Yes, sometimes in our well, we're there. sometimes in our evangelism we're doing that, but 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 in the sense you know, and you and I have talked about this of you know, well I don't want other people to know. Yeah, yeah but but then again, you're being that Lone Ranger Christian. Well, we need to be contending side by side. We need to be encouraging one another. I need to know what you're doing so I know how to encourage you. Uh, likewise, you for me because we're contending side by side and. and and oh yeah, sometimes invite one another along with us in doing those things. Yeah, yeah you probably aren't going to invite me if, if it has to do with constructing something at somebody's house. Well, uh, although, although can if you, you read need... plans, pardon? Can you read the plans? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but but you could use me to haul away the the a, a common laborer. the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. right. Yeah. Give me a wheelbarrow. <laughs> exactly. Right, the common laborer who's <laughs> looking for his denarius. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, and again, here we go. This ties into that gospel. It ties into the psalm, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. Yeah. God's got this. He's, He's tabernacling with you guys. Uh, That's what his word does. That's what his sacrament does. He tabernacles with us. Uh, and, and, and Christ says, I will be with you always. Uh, and oh yeah, by the way, it, it's that uh, pouring heaping coals upon them. Uh, yeah. Because it'll be a clear sign to them of their destruction and our salvation. Right. <laughs> Not yeah. that we gloat over that, but it, it's that sense of, you know, I know you're going through a rough period, rough period of time right now. How can, how can you be so joyful when they see that? Right. They see your salvation. How can you be at ease? What what? How can you go around and feel at peace with yeah. everything that's going on? Yeah. You know, interesting though. Through this whole thing, you know, Paul's talking about all the things that he's gone through here, but. He's not talking about Paul. Everything he does, he points to Christ. Right. The whole thing is not about me. It's about Christ. I'm going through this in hopes that Christ will, or in knowing that Christ will, in, in, in serving Christ. It's all about Christ. Right. And it, I'm not saying I want to suffer for the sake of Christ the way Paul did. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but it says you're going to suffer. It says I'm going to, <laughs> and, and that's where I'm going. You know, you know, not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake. So if, if some may read that and say, well, if you're not suffering, then you're not a true believer. Or if you're not being blessed in riches, you're not a true believer. You know, God has us where God wants us. And he... Diane, Diane just commented about that. You know, oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, and and we do fall short a lot. You know, and yeah, I have, and, and Lisa, yes, I have that log in my eye. You know, I know it's there. But I also know that I can see light on the other side of that log. Right. And that light is Christ. Well, and that's why, as with the psalmist, we have to cry out to the Lord. You know, let my let my heart seek your face. Seek. Don't seek. don't hide it from me. Exactly. Don't hide it from me. Take the log out of my eye. <laughs> that's what we have confession of sins for every Sunday. Is that log can get taken out of our mm-hmm. eyes so we can see Jesus. You know, God gave us life for a purpose, and it's not for sitting on our hands. It is for doing works. But our salvation does not come through works. Right. Although works are that fruit that we bear because we're living in the faith. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. Uh, and so we can express... <laughs> Sitting on your hands, I, I, I met with some pastors yesterday, and, and one of them is the local Assembly of God pastor. And, and I made the comment, you know, we're, we're all striving to proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ. However, we as Lutherans, we have people who sit on their hands. They, as the Assembly of God, have people who raise their hands. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go again. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I think we better call it quits. For you think we better ship. call it quits? You're not going to sink your ship today, yeah, are you? <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. Uh, again, uh, we pray that God will use this time of study to uh, uh, bless your worship uh, this upcoming Sunday. And uh, just continue to pray for me as I prepare that message on, on the epistle text in Philippians. Uh, that it might be that which God desires uh, for that contending that that striving together for us uh, to, to glorify Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that uh, we know that living in this world is going to uh, cause us to be assailed and, and the enemy will encamp around us uh, and against us. Uh, and, and, and we know that those battles happen, whether they be culturally done or whether they be our personal circumstances, that we know that they don't hinder the progress of your gospel. So enable that gospel to live in us in such a way that, it, that the gospel can progress uh, through, through the way that you use us, but also it can progress in the lives of people that, that we exemplify it to. Now guide and lead us and bless us to have those opportunities and to respond to them in the way that you choose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so as we dismiss today, I dismiss you as I always. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.